Hey there folks, Jason here again, and we have a uh, Bad Dad Bat Rep. We haven't done one of these in a little while. We've played a couple X-Men games, but not too recently. So we're going to try to get a new one in uh, this Sunday afternoon. So my uh, Imperial opponent, right over there, can you say hello? Hello. Uh, he is going to be, uh, his goal is... Uh, I just got a uh, splurge and I picked up the Corellian Corvette over there in the far left hand corner. What his goal is going to be is to s either destroy its engines or destroy it entirely. I'm playing with some simplified rules here. Uh, so he has to do that and um, obviously uh, I'm going to be playing the Corvette because there's a little more sophisticated rules and so I have to get it off this closest table edge and he has to prevent it from doing so. And uh, one of the, my future hobby projects is going to be to make some uh, three-dimensional uh, asteroids. But we've got some asteroids here. We uh, played it where um, uh, if you hit that, if you hit one, you take a hull point or you lose a shield, and uh, you can't fire that round. Uh, and so that's going to be the goal. So we've got a four by six foot table. I have no idea uh, if this is a fair matchup at all. They do call the inclusion of the Corellian Corvette an epic fight. But where you do play with the simplified rules, so we're going to try to keep it as balanced as possible, or maybe uh, favored a little bit more toward the Imperial player who's standing right next to me. So we're going to come back in just a second. I'm going to go over uh, what each side, uh, what their um, what their ships are. Over uh, the Imperial player's force. I uh, basically had a hard time trying to make up the points for the Corellian Corvette, so we tried to jam just all kinds of different things in here, uh, maximum points possible. So the first one he's going to play is going to be the Dark Curse. And again, we played simplified rules, so we're not doing focus or evade dice. Uh, but basically, it just gives him a better piloting skill, and uh, he can't reroll. An opponent can't reroll attack dice, so that's 16 points. And then next, we have Mauler Mythal, which is an advanced uh, regular Tie Fighter pilot. So when uh, Mauler attacks at range band one, you get to roll one additional attack dice, which is pretty good. And we'll see if Andy can get in close enough to the Corvette, which shouldn't be too hard because it doesn't exactly maneuver very well. Uh, his third ship is Tetran Cowl. It's uh, one of the uh, TIE Interceptor packs. And this one, he when he does a roll maneuver, he gets to pick the distance that it goes back, which is pretty sweet, and that comes in at 24 points. And then his last regular ship is Karnor Jax, uh, which his special abilities don't really matter too much for this. Uh, but he's got a better piloting skill. And then because we needed a little bit more firepower on the Imperial side, I just popped up the, the uh, Lambda class shuttle that we have and uh, gave it the special character. It comes with 27 points and then I added on a heavy laser cannon, which at range bands 2 or 3 is a pretty potent. And then the flight instructor, which helps him to dodge. So that comes up at 11, 38, 58, 64, 84, 88, uh, 94, uh, 101, 117 points, if I did my math right in my head really quick. So 117 points on this side. So let's go take a look at what the Imperial, or the, uh, the Rebel Scum is going to be. All right, and then for the, uh, the Corellian Corvette, we just took the regular one, no advance, no upgrades. Uh, you can take, like, Han Solo and Princess Leia, C-3PO, R2-D2, and they all do various things. For this, I want to keep it a little bit easier, and uh, this ship's a little bit unusual in that it's essentially treated as two different ships. So you look, you see the, the, the fore end of the ship has uh, the main turbo lasers, and it has eight hull points and five shields. And in the rear, that card on the right, uh, has the energy generation points, and that's how you allocate energy for the Corellian Corvette. And it's got eight hull points, but only three shields. So my opponent should remember that the rear of the ship is uh, weaker. Right, Andy? Yeah, um... There's two sides, and then you might flip the card over, and then you can see that what it looks like, how bad it is after it gets damaged. Okay, well, let's look. We'll just show this one really quick. So you can see the four. If you uh, you destroy this one, you can see it's all on fire, and then you only get two shots, and you don't have any shields and everything in the back. If you just you cripple the aft part of the ship, you only generate one uh, energy point instead of uh, five, uh, and that's bad. So here you can see I also added on, uh, just to try to maybe keep it a little bit more fair, uh, quad laser cannons to each side. And you can see uh, they each take uh, two energy and they have three shots in range bands one and two. Uh, you see the big guns in the front uh, with four shots only shoot from range bands three to five. 
and you get a longer uh, longer reach with the Corvette. So this comes up to 90, 104 points. So he's got a little bit of an advantage, and I'm hoping I'm going to try to coach him in using his. Uh, if he can get around behind me, uh, that's probably not a good thing for the Corellian Corvette. So we're going to go on and we're going to do deployment here really quick. Okay, so uh, let's go over the Imperial deployment really quick. We're just going to look down the table and you'll see that uh, the Corellian, they figured out where the Corellians were coming on, or the Corellian Corvette was coming on. And so it's just going to hang out down there. Uh, so he, uh, I said he couldn't go past range band one. So it looks like he has Tetra and Cowl with the TIE Interceptor on the right. And then to the left of him is uh, uh, the Dark Curse. And then Mahler Mythyl, and then the, uh, the shuttle, which barely sneaks on range band one. In fact, it's a little bit too far. Cheater. I was cheating. And then we have uh, Carnord Jax. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Again, he has to uh, disable or destroy the ship. He gets bonus points if he disables it and doesn't destroy it. And he has to try to get it past mine. And I have mine. to get it past here, and it doesn't move very fast. So, Andy? Uh, handshake before I crush you. <laughs> All right, so let's go on. So we'll see you at the end of turn one. All right, end of uh, first turn movement. Andy, you want to tell us what your guys did? So my. Why don't you start um, from over here on the right hand side? So my um, tie interceptor just went a like one. Um, hard turn this way, and then... No, it went straight. It's still facing forward. Oh, yeah, right. And this one did a hard turn this... To the left, right? Yeah, and then this one did a... 4-4. Four, 4-4, four. Four forward, right? So he's going straight ahead toward the... And then my... And then this one did a... 3-4. Is that your shuttle? Yeah, and this one did a... 3-4. Okay. And then my... Dad did a confusing move. Sorry. I just kind of turned to the left away from those two asteroids right there. So, Andy, what's your plan? You kind of got one ship going over here to the left, and you got one taken off in front of everybody else, and two, and uh, a couple of guys hanging back. Do you have a battle plan? You don't have to tell me if it's a secret. Um, my battle plan is to take my shuttle up here to get this and try to shoot that guy at time. I'm going to take my two of my ties. This tie is going to go that way and go right there. So if he's coming toward, um, I can shoot him. And then this tie is going to go right up in this spot right here. You know, I'm just going to try to get the, uh, him past the asteroid or something. Okay. And then my shuttle is just going to stay in that. And that guy, um, he is going to go right over in the right here so he can kind of guard the shuttle because when we got the shuttle box I got that idea okay I think that sounds like a pretty good plan so we will see you at the end of turn two uh, so that was the end of turn three no two two you're right um, I'm gonna say the Corellian Corvette's movement first because it just went forward doesn't go very fast so it's a little bit closer Annie, why don't you go through and tell me what the Imperials did? So my little Imperial, I just went four forward. Uh huh. And then same with the shuttle. Who's getting close to the asteroid? Yes, where I try and ready to move him, which I said on my plane. Okay. And then um, I've got my Dark Curse who went three forward, and then I've got my Tight Interceptor who went a little bit over here. To miss the asteroid. Technically, yeah, and then I'm going to go circle back over there, and then this time I just went too hard. Okay, so we're going to be on to turn three now, and the and Corvette, by the way, it spent uh, one energy on that move. Bye. All right, uh, end of turn three, a little confusion in the Imperial ranks. Yes, 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 I think So, I uh, first the Corellians spent one energy and moved forward again, not very quickly. And uh, so, Andy, why don't you tell me what you've got going over on over here on the left? First, Andy thought he could do a turn to miss the asteroid, and there's no way he could. So, uh, the senior instructor pilot did an override and made him do a hard left, so he didn't hit 
the asteroid there. So my whole soul just was over here, but I thought he might dodge it. Then, but I but I knew if I did that, my dad would see it, so I just kind of think it, but I had a little bit of confusion, so I, so I didn't override this way. I didn't override that way, and as your senior pilot. And then my other little... TIE Interceptor did a hard what? Hard... what? Right. And then my... Why did you have him do a hard left? Um, because I thought maybe they could, um, go, keep going, um, when you did the hard left, you can go, like, bad, um, here. Yeah, you, can, you sure can. And I thought this guy might be able to do the same thing. But I don't think that ship can do that maneuver because it's awfully big and slow, but we'll see. And so, then, so I'm going to keep it behind it. Because I got that idea from the box. Okay. And then I've got my two little. So you got three more ships. You got your two TIE I fighters my, going up the middle. I got my two um, TIE fighters who totally rule. Okay. And then I've got. And, and you got your one interceptor kind of way over here on the right, I'm right? I decided to do three forward. Wait, let me see. Three forward, yeah. And then this guy did uh, five. And then you got your TIE Interceptor way out over here by itself, not really helping anybody, and right? He, um, maybe he'll turn right here to miss the asteroid. I thought maybe he could go over here in this exact circle between these two asteroids. But, um... Just remember how slow that Corellian Corvette goes, right? And then he can move over here. So maybe if the... My, over there into that exact circle and I might be able to get some damage points on me. But that guy's not that strong, so he, this guy might be able to do some serious damage on him. And then he, my guy could um, execute. So that's why I think uh, I got a little bit more and my two TIE fighters that rule go, could go over here. But they're even weaker than your TIE Interceptor, right? Yeah, they just look like them. And then it can, it can kind of drive past the eye. Alright. So we're going to go on to turn four and see how all this shapes up. Right, Indy? Right, and I hope I don't get into that. Okay. Alright, that was the end, I think, of turn four. And we finally got to some shooting. So I, the Corellian Corvette just moved up again. Keeps going straight forward. It spent one energy on that. And then it allocated one energy to soup up its uh, the turbo lasers, which is the, uh, the primary weapon system for the ship. And uh, what Andy did over here, uh, he is, uh, his uh, senior pilot is, uh, has him in the doghouse because he was going to fly his TIE interceptor off the board. So there's another course correction. It was right on the edge, but uh, I've adjusted it. So the uh, junior pilot is... Uh, in the doghouse this round from the senior instructor. So Andy uh, turned his uh, TIE Interceptor, kind of, was kind of close to the edge of the board, I turned it straight, and the Lambda class shuttle moved up. And he, uh, he has his two uh, super awesome TIE Fighters kind of in the middle spread out now. And he's got his uh, second TIE Interceptor poking over here on the right. So I had two shots with the extreme range of the uh, the primary weapon system in range band 5 uh, and I just could have either shot at the Lambda class shuttle or this TIE fighter over here and I decided to go for the inner the uh, shuttle because it doesn't have that much of uh, uh, an evade capacity and uh, opponents get uh, more uh, evade dice more defense dice uh, against uh, turbo lasers that long range to represent that you have a lot more time to respond uh, but I end up getting two shots through after I supercharged it, so I had to roll five dice. And even with his ability, he got to re-roll one of his evades, so he up with two evades. I got four hits, so he lost two of his five shields. Uh, so that was, uh, first shield blood to the rebels. So we're gonna go on now to turn five, and you're still in, uh, 
the doghouse, um, junior pilot. And so we're going to go on to turn five now. All right, so I think that was the end of turn five, and uh, Andy has gotten a little bit closer, so he's got some of his guys in close. Uh, I just, again, moved forward. I think I've got a pretty good lane here. Might be a little close down here towards the end, just to kind of truck forward. So I went four forward, and I allocated um, one shot. Actually, I haven't taken my shots yet. We're going to be right back. Sorry for that abbreviated uh, turn five. So I uh, ended up taking a shot at uh, the Dark Curse, because my turbo lasers only uh, work from range three to five. And uh, so it was five attack dice versus five defense dice because he gets a bonus for me shooting at long range. But I snuck one through, so the Dark Curse has one damage card on it. So um, basically, uh, I, other than that, I just reinforced all of... I did two reinforcements for the front shields and one reinforcement for the rear shields. And Andy wasn't able to punch through. He hit a couple times, but he wasn't able to punch through my reinforcements. So the uh, Corellian Corvette is essentially unscathed. But one of his ships has taken uh, one damage this round, and I pinged off two of the shields of the uh, the shuttle last round. So we're going to go on now, I think, to turn six. Okay, uh, end of, I think, turn six? I always lose track when I film this way. So uh, what happened was I just moved forward, and Andy kind of turned all of his ships in and actually did a pretty good pincer attack. And uh, so he focused on the rear, and not only did he take off all three shields, but he took off five of its eight hull points. So I only have, I only have uh, uh, three hull points left, so I'm going to have to build up my shields in the back again. Um, uh, so that wasn't good. And uh, so what I did back was with my left rear quad laser cannon, I took shots at his injured TIE fighter but missed. And on the right, I got three really good hits on his shuttle. So his shuttle has no shields left. And uh, my rear of my ship is completely exposed and is down. If it takes a couple more good hits like this, uh, we're in trouble. Although now he has to try to plan ahead to see... Um, to line up another good shot uh, he does need to remember that if his movement base ends up touching my movement base because I'm a huge ship and he's a small or a large one he's instantly destroyed so he's got some uh, maneuvering to think about here and uh, so we will see in the next turn but definitely he uh, the uh, the aft end of the Corellian Corvette took some serious hits this round so good on him let's see if he can follow up all right, next turn, turn seven, eight. I think, eight, eight, no, nine. or nine, eight, eight. whatever, the next turn after the last one, I'll watch it after the video. Um, so, uh, Curly and Corvette decided just to keep moving forward, because it kind of got its shield hammered, it's basically in defense mode now. So Andy uh, has got a little confusion in the back ranks, the Imperial Commander... So he had his, uh, his shuttle make a gentle right. He's got his TIE Fighter aiming right toward an asteroid. So he's going to have to turn around for this one. Might want to think about doing a loop, maybe. I don't know. Uh, he, has, he had one TIE Interceptor shooting at the rear of the ship. And then uh, the, uh, the other TIE Interceptor he has had to kind of just move straight forward to make sure he was out of the flight path of the Corellian Corvette. So I think Andy might have a decent shot if he can get all of his ships turned around the right way. If he can get all of his ships turned around the right way and hammer the back again like he did last time. And he almost knocked out the drive system of the ship. Which means it moves forward at like one inch, basically a turn. So if he can knock out the rear of the ship, the game's pretty much his. But I am getting close to my board edge. And all I have to do is have the front part of the base... Touch the board edge. It'll probably take me another three turns or so, three or four turns. So let's see if I can hold him off. So we will see you at the end of the next turn, which we're going to call turn 10, just because I think that's what it is. All right, we decided this was going to be turn 10. So what happened? Guess what? The Corellian Corvette continued to move forward. Uh, the uh, uh, Imperial player uh, banked his uh, TIE fighter out of the way of the asteroid over there. That's good. Uh, made the sharpest turn he could with the shuttle, but he's out, not quite in range of his... Uh, uh, I think he has a, a heavy laser cannon, which should could juice the damage to the back of the ship. Uh, the uh, blue with the red striped TIE Interceptor was in gun's range and took a shot. 
and peeled off one of the shields. So what I did uh, this round was I used one energy for the engines to keep moving four forward. I uh, boosted the back shields by one. I put two energy into the quad laser cannon and one into the front or the turbo lasers to uh, be able to boost that. Uh, he got two hits through. Uh, I fortified one of the shields, but one obviously punched through that and then took out one of the shields. So I had two shields in the rear. Uh, and then I shot back at Carnor Jax, the red tie interceptor there. And with the quad laser cannon, I did two of its three hull points are dead. And I thought I had him because he was in the right range band where, or close enough that I gave him the extra die for being further away that uh, the turbo lasers, uh, he rolled really well on his evades, and I did roll that well on my hits. So Carnor Jax is uh, definitely singed, but still in the game. So I think Andy's got a good chance here. He's not going to get that TIE Fighter back this round. But if he can turn in his uh, shuttle over there with its heavy laser cannon and get both TIE Interceptors positioned properly, he's got some great shots at the back of my ship. So I think uh, this will be the make-it-or-break-it round for, uh, for the game. So we're going to see you at the end of turn 11. All right, uh, end of turn 12. That's a messy looking table. We'll have to pick up the uh, movement things next time. Anyways, uh, Corlean Corvette moved forward again, and he's got his TIE Interceptors kind of in the rear arc uh, where he could keep hammering things. So he's got about two turns, I would say, and he, he did pretty well this round. So uh, these guys turned around. The shuttle's trying to, you know, slowly. It doesn't turn very quickly. So I think next turn it might be in range of the heavy laser cannon. And the TIE Fighter has turned around, and it can now shoot forward at five uh, and maybe get into the fight, not this turn, but next turn. So the Corellian Corvette moved forward. These guys were smart and stayed on the, to, to its rear. Um, so what I did for my energy is kind of what I've done before. Uh, one energy to uh, move, one to, or fortify the shields by two, and uh, rebuilt one of the shields. Uh, so that's a total of four, and then I attached an energy to the uh, turbo lasers to try to take out Carnor Jax. Uh, the first TIE Interceptor shot and picked off one of my reinforcements. The second TIE Interceptor shot did really well and uh, took out the second reinforcement and two of the shields. So I'm down to one shield on the rear. And uh, I tried to fire back and uh, end Carnor Jax because he's kind of in perfect range right now. I had five attack dice to his three defense dice and I only rolled one hit and he rolled two evades. So now we're on to turn 12 and we'll see if he can synchronize attack for one more big one because I think I'm going to say two, three turns at the most, I'm going to be off the board. So uh, the Corellian Corvette is uh, uh, limping, but still in the fight. And if I can pick off Corner Jacks, I'll be very pleased. So we're going to see you at uh, turn 13? Yeah, 13. All right, end of move 13, and the Corellian Corvette is still hanging around. We are really close to the table edge. I think we've got one, maybe two more turns. And unfortunately, it just the Imperials just didn't do enough this round. Yeah. No pouting. Uh, he's just pretending anyways. So he got his two uh, interceptors right in the back again, right where they should be, and he's almost got the Corvette turned, or the uh, shuttle turned around enough to get in the game. And this guy's hustling back over as fast as he can. I don't think he's going to be in time. Uh, so all I did, I didn't take any shots. I just reinforced the rear. Uh, I boosted my shields and fortified and uh, moved forward. That's all I did. He took shots, and he, I think, picked off the two uh, reinforcing moves that I had. And I hope I'm doing that right. Overboosted the shields, essentially. and uh, But he didn't get through any of the shields themselves. So I think next turn, he's got to hustle up his shuttle. He's got to basically hope to destroy the rear of the ship. And then it can't really move, but barely anything. And if he can do that that he's got to start hammering on the front, but I think it's uh, tough times now for the Imperial Commander. But we see, we'll see what the dark side of the Force can do. So we will see you at turn, end of turn 14, probably the last turn. What do you think your chances are, Andy? No! You're on? Yeah. All right. We'll see you at the end of turn 14. All right. I think that was turn 14, and the Corellian Corvette made it. Barely. 
So Andy had it set up. He didn't get his TIE Fighter up here fast enough, but he had two TIE Interceptors and uh, the shuttle in range. And he took his shots first. Um, and he got through all of the shields and did one whole point worth of damage. So I have two whole points left in the back. Uh, out of the eight it started with, but that's all he could do. And um, I didn't fortify or anything, I just moved forward again. Technically I was over the edge, but I want to give it one last fight. Um, uh, so all I did was well, I didn't fortify or anything. I just put power into the uh, turbo laser, and I had my eyes set on Carnor Jax. And he was right in range. I had five attack dice versus his four defense dice. Carnor Jax went down. So, really good game. Uh, I don't know how balanced it was. Uh, I just don't have that many uh, points worth of ships. I have a bunch of other ones, but they're mostly on the uh, they're mostly on the uh, re rebellion side, not the imperial side. So, uh, I mean, I think uh, in terms of my thoughts for the battle, I think it played well. I don't know if it was imbalanced against. If having the Corellian Corvette was too powerful because the Corvette was too powerful, or because it was limp, it was almost too powerful, uh, it essentially got swarmed. So I don't know if it was unfair for me or for him to only have the Corvette. I think normally you would have a couple of ships, if I had an X-Wing or two, or even something sw smaller to kind of run interference in some of these bigger ships. The Corvette just doesn't have enough power to put out a lot of shots, and keep the shields up, and keep moving forward. You have to spend energy to even move it. Uh, I obviously didn't soup it up all that much, and uh, I wasn't always aggressive with it. Uh, but no, I think it, I think it was a fun game. Uh, Annie, what do you think? I think that if Darth Vader was real, um, he would kill all of those guys, and that now I know to not um, get all those guys away from each other when there's shit like that. So next time when I play, I'll get my you gonna gang up on him? Yeah. You did really well that one round, right? Yeah, and apparently you don't want to displease uh, Darth Vader. I wouldn't want to either. So, that's the end of another Bad Dad Bat Rep. Make your unhappy face, because you lost. Yeah. Right. Next time it'll be me. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Would welcome your comments, questions, positive comments, constructive comments, please. And uh, we will see you for the next Bad Dad Bat Rep shortly.